when I first talked to the sisters about leaving self-employment to go to work for somebody else, I said, tell me, tell me my job description, what are the metrics? And I will never forget that they said, you remember two things. Number one, recognize that we're all made in God's image. And number two, you are to reflect Christ as you take care of others. And I thought, gee, that's a couple of metrics that are worth living up to. So that, that's what got me here. Many times throughout the course of history, we look back on pivotal events whose outcomes seem to defy logic. Failure appeared nothing short of imminent, and yet, through the human spirit and the grace of God, challenges were overcome. Some might wonder how mankind managed to make it to the moon with computers no more powerful than a calculator. How a ragtag group of outnumbered patriots won their independence in a swamp outside of San Jacinto. And how did three French women who barely spoke a word of English found what is today the largest nonprofit faith-based hospital system in Texas. One might wonder if it was mere coincidence or a random act that guided these pioneers. But for those who believe when impossible odds are overcome, the only truth they see is a miracle occurred. Our early sisters were definitely visionaries. What they've done for this community is almost immeasurable. Right now at Santa Rosa, we're experiencing a, a transformation, and it's not the first one. Now they're going through their metamorphosis. It's who we are to reinvent ourselves. So change is kind of common to Santa Rosa. This is the story of a religious community that launched an entire health system. For more than 140 years, its mission has remained the same whose organization has consistently adapted to meet the changing needs of the patients it tirelessly serves. And you don't survive that long without having to make some very difficult decisions along the way. Welcome to San Antonio's first hospital, one of the most highly acclaimed in the country. Their legacy spawned San Antonio's first children's hospital, one of the first baccalaureate nursing programs in Texas, and in the 1970s became the largest Catholic hospital in the country with more than a thousand beds. Join us as we celebrate the miracle on Santa Rosa Street. You don't just do a job. We are in a privileged position to serve people. You know, the history of this place is rich. I think Santa Rosa kind of captures you. Once you get here, you feel like you found where you belong. It's a great place to work at. I like working here. I started August the 20th, 1958. 1959. 62. 1973. 79. 79. 81. 1988. For two and a half years. 12 years now. 18 years. 21 years. Almost 30 years. 32 wonderful years. And have loved every minute of it. I'm on my 32nd year here. 38 years now. 39 years already. I've been with the congregation for more than 50 years. If there is one thing to say about the tapestry that makes up Krista Santa Rosa's history, it is that its people persevere. Born in 1817, Claude Marie Dubuis would become the second Catholic bishop of the state of Texas, though his initial attempt at seminary was six months of frustration and failure. Unswayed, he enlisted the help of a tutor and entered seminary for a second time, bearing more fruitful results. We call Santa Rosa often the cradle of the congregation. Santa Rosa has a very special place in the um, hearts of the sisters because this was where we started. The cradle really was the foundation upon which we were able to grow and which we built our ministry. Dubuis was sent to the Texas frontier where extreme hardships would be endured. But these only strengthened his resolve. After two decades, he recognized a need for properly trained medical personnel, especially given the growing cholera outbreak in the burgeoning city of San Antonio. In hopes of establishing a hospital, Dubuis wrote to the Monastery of the Incarnate Word and Blessed Sacrament in France. His words are really beautiful and are the foundation for our congregation. Uh, he wrote and he said, Our Lord Jesus Christ, suffering in the persons of a multitude 
of sick and infirm of every kind seeks relief at your hands. Dubuis recruited a trio of courageous young nuns for this mission in 1869, compelling them to master the art of nursing and set sail on the perilous journey to Galveston. After arriving, sisters Madeleine Cholet, Jean Pérez Cinquin, and Agnes Buisson prepared to make their way to San Antonio by stagecoach. They would be the pioneer founders of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. But disaster would strike all too soon. As they were about to board the wagon to cross the vast frontier, they learned that the infirmary building they were expecting to use in San Antonio had sadly enough burned to the ground. Coming here in the first place was a remarkable thing. They worked night and day just to make sure that that was accomplished. I think of all the challenges that they faced and for them to continue this wonderful ministry. Undaunted by the tragedy and fortified by their faith in the Lord, the sisters set out to rebuild the burned infirmary. After eight months of arduous labor, much of which was done by the sisters, the new hospital was finished and christened Santa Rosa Infirmary, named after Rose of Lima, Peru, the first Catholic saint from the Americas. I don't think I ever want to leave Santa Rosa. I love the philosophy here. My father was an administrator here prior to me. Actually, my mother uh, went to nursing school here at Christa Santa Rosa and graduated in 1939. I had the absolute privilege of being married in St. John's Chapel. I had my children, my two children here. When we had our ICU on the fifth floor, I met my wife and uh, mother of my children. The, the people that I see here, uh, the people that I grew up with, I grew up on only about three or four blocks from here. Santa Rosa obviously has done so much for the community, but I have to be honest, it's done so much for my family. The mission of Santa Rosa developed as a natural extension of God's calling to those faithful pioneers. There are many other hospitals that have religious sounding names. Christa Santa Rosa is the only one that is faith-based, truly faith-based, and not for profit. The mission at Santa Rosa, of course, is very important. To extend the healing ministry. To extend the healing ministry. To extend the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. Free of Jesus Christ. Free of Jesus Christ. I think that just raises the bar. It says what nurses and physicians should be doing all along. Ministering to people who are at their most vulnerable point. And attracting people who are like-minded and like-spirited. There's so much happening in our world today that can really drag people down. The most important thing we can bring to society, especially today, is joy and hope and peace. Helping each other, bringing that healing love of Jesus Christ to others. On November 25, 1869, the Weekly Express quoted Sister Madeline saying, We hope to meet the wants of the patients entrusted to our care. The hospital will be open to all persons without distinction of nationality or creed. The number of charity patients must be proportioned to the number of paying patients, or else we should be in a state of bankruptcy at the very beginning. It was common to receive patients that were transients, and the care that was given to those people was the care that was given to anybody who came in with a lot of money. The care was the same. Uh, the almighty dollar is supposed to be in front of everything. And that hurts because we're here and we're dedicated to care for you, whether you have it or you don't have it, because we value human life. That's the philosophy we try to teach people, that it's not about how much money you're making, it's the fact that you have an opportunity to take care of somebody's life. To be honest with you, I think being a leader in a not-for-profit health system is much more difficult than it is in a for-profit system these days. And the reason for that is, not only do you have to be successful from a business perspective because you have to be able to pay your bills, but you have to be true to your mission. On December 3rd, the day of the hospital's opening, the nine-bed hospital admitted eight patients. The petite two-story frame structure, which consisted of a few wards for the sick, a convent area for the sisters, and a small chapel, also served as the first mother house of the newly founded 
Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. Because of really lack of financial resources and also probably because of um, a lack of, of personnel resources, really the sisters did everything. They were the administrators, they were the nurses, they were heads of departments. They cooked the meals, they made the beds, they turned their convent into a mortuary and buried the dead from there. The sisters were such a wonderful influence. They made you work hard, but you could tell they really cared. I came to love the nuns. She still wore the habit and everything else. Just kept me petrified all the time. Always, anytime I'd see her out on the floors, I would turn around and go get go in somebody's room. You know, it was a rigid shift. I mean, she demanded excellence from all of her nursing staff and from all the clinical staff in general. And I think that was not lost on the physicians. They appreciated the fact that, that she took her role very seriously as administrator to, to increase that excellence. So I, I think it was a team effort that went on back then. Sister Dorothy in surgery, you know, she ran it with a, she was a tight ship. They said, where are you, doctor? You know, you're five minutes late, you know? If I didn't get to surgery in time, they'd get that ruler out, you know? <laughs> Everything that we tried to do that was new and different, uh, you had to explain it, you had, they would see about it, but they never held back. Uh, and so the sisters were wonderful. Some of them were a little bit tough, <laughs> but, but, you know, in general, they were terrific. During the 19th century, medicine was still in a primitive state. The training of doctors was basic and the need for sterility was not yet understood. People were concerned with illness only after it happened and physicians were expected to restore health rather than to preserve it. In essence, hospitals during the 19th century were viewed as a place you went to die, not as a place to heal. My greatest memory of the structure and function of the department was the back-to-back -back hurricanes, the first week in September in 2005. It was very, very uh, emotional. I told our first years, I said, this doesn't apply to you guys. Y'all go home, you need some rest, uh, we'll see you back uh, after Labor Day. And they came back to me late in the afternoon, there was a knock on my door, I said, Dr. Martin, we all met, and, and we know that you want us to go home, but at times of emergencies, isn't that what doctors are supposed to do? And I thought it was such a great answer that at times where we're needed, isn't that our job? And I saw they picked up on that real, uh, real quickly, and, and, and they were there all during the Labor Day weekend. During the difficult first years, Santa Rosa could not have survived without a dedicated group of intrepid physicians. Among those was Dr. Herf, who performed what is believed to be the first hysterectomy in the United States in 1856, and was the first to use chloroform during surgery on a Texas Ranger. Herf was the driving force in convincing the bishop and city fathers to establish a hospital directed by nursing sisters. Additionally, it was at the urging of Dr. Julius Brunigel and Dr. William Wolfe that the nurse training school was established. Notre Dame Hall was the original school of nursing. In fact, it was the first school of nursing and one of the very first school of nursing, I think, in Texas, but certainly here in San Antonio. In 1881, they extended their ministry by opening the Incarnate Word School, whose roots evolved into the University of the Incarnate Word. Three of my children graduated from Incarnate Word uh, High School. My son graduated from Incarnate Word uh, um, University. And it's almost like second nature. When you see a nun walking down the hall, you say, blessed be the Incarnate Word, you know? From its earliest days, Santa Rosa cared primarily for the poorest people of the city and was often referred to as the Charity Hospital. Many orphan children were admitted into their care at the Santa Rosa Infirmary. Therefore, it is not surprising that the sisters established the first orphanages in San Antonio, St. Joseph's Orphanage for girls and St. John's Orphanage for boys. As I stand here in the chapel, this was the site of our first orphanage. When the sisters first came in 1869, they took care of the cholera patients, but there were also many orphans. And so often the orphans would be left on the sisters' doorstep. Two dark dates in the history of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word will never be forgotten. The first was on September 8, 1900, when 90 children and 10 sisters lost their lives from St. Mary's Orphan Asylum in the most destructive natural disaster to befall the United States, the Galveston Hurricane. Strangely, the second tragic event also involved an orphanage. 
On the morning of October 30, 1912, a fire destroyed St. John's Orphanage and took the lives of five nuns and three boys. So this is sacred space for us in addition to, to being our founding ministry. It's hard to believe now, but in 1959, when Santa Rosa Children's Hospital opened its doors as a part of the city center campus, Santa Rosa had already been in operation for 90 years. Our legacy in children's ministry goes way further back than 1959 when we officially opened the Children's Hospital. Uh, the sisters have had a affinity for children's health care well back into the 1800s. During a meeting of the Empty Stocking Club, Mrs. A.W. Walliser heard the story of Little Joe. Young, crippled boy was picked up on the streets and brought in to the sisters in the hospital for medical care. Thanks to Mrs. Walliser, five beds were filled by the end of the week and a new ward to accommodate these children. Community citizens, leading citizens, came to the sisters and said, we really need a hospital that specializes in pediatrics and in the needs of our children of this community because we didn't have anything like that. From 1958 to 1966, Sister Mary Vincent O'Donnell served the organization as CEO. She was a visionary who laid out long-term plans to keep up with the growth in the market and medical advances. Sister Mary Vincent had excellent leadership abilities and constantly rounded the floors to keep up with events going on throughout the hospital. She was, I think, a consummate fundraiser way back in her time. There was a, a cute little lady and her name was Elizabeth Sullivan Clem and she would come in and visit with Sister Mary Vincent. Mrs. Clem had established a trust and upon her passing it was going to benefit unrestrictedly if you will our children's hospital and I want you to know that trust still benefits children's hospital today. Sister Angela Claire Moran took over as CEO from 1972 to 1986 and had to contend with many rapid changes in health care, including declining revenues and intense competition. And she said, you just do what's right for the patient, do what's best for that patient, and we'll take care of the details in the morning. I said, I think I can do that. And so she taught me the uh, importance of stewardship and that uh, what we do with those resources is very important because they're not ours, they're really the patient resources. While these changes were occurring, Sister Angela Clare led efforts to expand the downtown campus and spearheaded construction of the Medical Center campus. The inspired growth led Santa Rosa to become the largest Catholic hospital in the U.S. by the mid-70s. We were the first hospital to start receiving patients by helicopter. Interestingly enough, Medicare was developed with the assistance of one of Santa Rosa's own sisters. LBJ was a uh, frequent visitor here to Christa Santa Rosa. Sister Mary Vincent was a part of the commission of the federal government to create Medicare because she was such an outstanding leader as a hospital administrator. It's been said that nurses are the heartbeat of health care. I think the nurse really plays an important part in the delivery of care. I love that I can take care of people spiritually, emotionally, physically. And for me, the physical components of nursing are, are, are good, but what gets me is I love taking care of people's emotional needs and spiritual needs. Every patient that I've talked to, I said, well, why do you come here and not somewhere else? They said, I know I'm going to get good care here. If nursing was a Miss America pageant and you had to pick your soapbox, patient advocacy and satisfaction would be my soapbox. You can be one person in a very large facility with a lot of staff, and you actually can make a difference. The Family Practice Residency Program was established in 1996 and is now one of the top ranked in the community. Our program really emphasizes maternity skills, really teaches our residents how to deliver babies and, and do it in a, in a safe and, and, and expert uh, fashion. And I got a call uh, one day from one of our residents saying that, the, that, uh, that he couldn't identify where the, 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 the baby's heartbeat was located, the fetal heart tones. And when I came over there, it, rather than being where it was supposed to be, it was way around here underneath the liver. And we 
said, what in the world, what kind of position is this baby in? So we got an ultrasound. He couldn't tell us. We wound up getting an MRI and found that the baby was not even in the uterus. It was an ectopic pregnancy that had gone all the way to term. And there was a term baby sitting outside the uterus. And I still had an MRI in my office. So of all the situations that kind of caught me off guard, that was probably one of the ones that, that stands out to me the most. And the lady delivered a very healthy, about a seven and a half pound baby. The cohesiveness of the faculty, the strength of the residents, the recruiting practice they had in dealing with the medical students, and the level of care that they provided was amazing, truly amazing. Seeing the opportunity to stabilize the Sisters of Charity of Houston merged with the Sisters of the Incarnate Word of San Antonio to form Christus Health, a stronger organization whose combined financial strength would be able to support long-term strategic growth. It's not about location and it's not about brick and mortar. It's about the relationships that are created. Obviously, most of us think of it as a building. I don't really think of Santa Rosa's building because when you go back in the history, Santa Rosa is really a mission. So you actually created two halves to your life. And, and the first half should be what, to be successful. The sec second half is what's significant. Uh, unfortunately, we see a lot of people who are successful but don't have a significant second half. The same dilemma that confronted the sisters in 1869 confronted Krista Santa Rosa City Center again in 2012. How to provide the best care possible to the population with the greatest need. Healthcare is a very quickly changing environment these days, uh, particularly at the federal and state levels. And we have had to make a lot of very difficult decisions to make sure we kept the viability of our ministry alive. With the rapidly changing healthcare market, the leadership of Krista spent the last decade working with other major health systems to develop a tier one freestanding children's hospital in San Antonio. Tried for many, many years to be able to do this in line or in conjunction with other facilities in the city and would get it to a certain point and then it would fall apart. And so in this last venture, when it fell apart, I think Christus Health, and especially Christus Santa Rosa, had the courage to say, well, then we'll do it ourselves. So we immediately began to look at what ways we could make sure that our children's ministry stayed strong for the future. Uh, we knew we had to have a new facility of some sort. Most recently, a revolutionary rewriting of health care law shepherded by President Obama known as the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act made the push for a dramatic change even more of a necessity. Transforming our downtown campus without a doubt is, is the hardest decision we've had to make since I've been here anyway and I would probably say maybe in the last 50 years for the Santa Rosa Health System. I think we the sisters were astounded at the faith and the courage that that took. Lots of emotions involved. It came as a shock, you know, to be honest with you. All those feelings of when you lose someone, all of a sudden I was feeling them. You know, that anger, denial, the shock phase. So I was a bittersweet when I heard that they were going to do this, but at the same time I realized in the long, long run, in the big picture, this is what needs to be best for San Antonio. My main hope is we continue to grow. I hope they always remember Santa Rosa fondly even though there's a little twang in their heart. You respond to the needs of time. That's what the sisters did. That's what we in society need to keep doing. And then have the courage to do it. I mean, the sisters did it without any money, without anything. But again, they couldn't have done it if the whole community hadn't gathered around them and helped them to do it. July 31st, 2012, marks the end of a chapter for Krista City Center, but not the end of the story. The transformation to a tier one freestanding children's hospital will be monumental, leaving the landscape of medical services forever changed in downtown San Antonio. Like an old dear friend, City Center's passing will be missed, 
but the offspring it leaves behind will bring more comfort and care to the children of South Texas and San Antonio than ever possible before. We are going to transform this campus into something that San Antonio has never seen before. But with the end of the day, I also want to know that I'm doing right by the people I work with, and I'm doing something good for the people we work for. As the mom of a complex, chronically ill child, I've watched my own child's life improve because of the technology that children's hospitals and partnerships like we have have done to impact the life of children. Santa Rosa is a mission that doesn't stop because we change the purpose of a facility. I would just hope that as time goes on and this becomes an amazing world-class pediatric facility, I don't want our community to forget what we've done here. We've been a family to people. We've been the go-to people in a time of crisis. And we know this because our patients and our families tell us. When they have had options to go elsewhere in the city, they come here and they specifically tell you that they've chosen Christus because they feel our mission. It's not just words on paper. They feel what we're doing for them. So my hope is, is that 10 years from now, people will be saying wonderful things about our pediatric hospital, but they're also going to say, wow, 10 years ago, Christus really was something for our community, for our adults. Do you remember when? And that's what I hope that they're saying. As evidenced from their actions, the associates of Krista Santa Rosa Health System will continue to work through whatever challenges and adversities God may lay before them, with love and caring being the pillars of their institution. And I was part of the family and loved and appreciated it. But me, myself, and I, all three of us, love this life. I just want to say, you know, thank you for the institution, for the privilege of, of working here. We may retire from a ministry, but we never retire from the mission. Some people ask me a while ago, are you retired? I said, no, I don't believe in retirement. I said, nowhere in the Bible does it talk about retirement. I want to be like Moses walks away and nobody, nobody knows where he went to. <laughs> the final words on the campus known as Krista Santa Rosa City Center are better said by a man who once graced its halls. And even though his words were not originally intended for this hospital, these words ring true for City Center nonetheless. And as I walk off into the city streets, a final word to the men and women. My friends, we did it. We weren't just marking time. We made a difference. We made the city stronger. We made the city freer. And we left her in good hands. All in all, not bad. Not bad at all. And so, goodbye. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you.